welcome to the sports show. Patrick Rice, Dark Star, Sid Hartman, Mike Max. I will serve as your ringmaster sometimes. Baby. So one thing to say before we start tonight: Phil Waterman, who was the general manager here, is moving on to bigger and better things, and we want to thank him and absolutely appreciate everything he How did can for you us. Have, where's he going? How can you have bigger and better things? Than running the station with the sports show. With the sports show, on. a lot of responsibility. Where's he he might be moving on, but he's not going to be better. That's for yeah. sure. Well, Phil, you don't know how much you're going to miss. <laughs> yeah, you're going to miss us. You think, we're, we're you think just... we might go national? He kept the dog out of the studio. <laughs> I, no, no, many, I challenge many you. Many times our challenge is getting dark, not talking about horse racing in the first. He kicked the dog out of the studio. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. I never knew that. We, we try to stay away from horse racing early in the show. We try to crescendo to it. But right. We were just talking about this, uh, Sydney. You had some interesting insights on the triple crown bit. I have no insight. How <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, know it was. One thing. When George Steinbrenner, I went down to that uh, Ocala Cala Ranch. place. I never seen anything like that in my life. He cared more about the horses <laughs> than he cared about the Yankees. So one day he comes to town and he says, "You don't know this, but this is one of the best cities for horse people in the country." So we go out to Interlock and we have lunch and that uh, re relative of that woman, the one that... Franny Ganner? Franny Ganner. Yeah. And he starts... Oh, the relative of the woman that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of a yeah. sudden, tell it, tell this guy about the people here with horses. We like Whitney. Mm -hmm. all. He wrote a list town. It was amazing the number of people in this town who were yeah. racing horses. A bunch of those guys that you know from Cargill had horses. Yeah. Some of your buddies from over there, and it, it what we like Whitney was a big gunner. I heard a couple of boys before the race saying, "I'll have another." Is one of the most underrated horses. Still uh, didn't, still didn't go off as the favorite uh, on Saturday. But what a finish! What a great race! Boating Meister managed to run slower fractions, and he's uh, that horse still ran him down. He sure did. The thing that is great for us in the horse business is that now for three weeks, we're going to be on the front of the sports page somewhere every day right. with, the, with the triple crown chase. And mm -hmm. there hasn't been one since 78, a firm. And this will be really, really exciting for us. And it's great for the racetrack and uh, all the guys. What, does it just resonate all out there? Does it, it, they gave you the paper the other day. Yeah, we had a whole page. But the thing is, on the day of the Belmont, well, if this horse would win the triple crown, or or not, you're going to get unbelievable coverage. Uh, I don't from the think it's going to be uh, affirmed in Ali Dar and Secretariat and Sham though, because I don't think Bodie Meister will show up at the Belmont and uh, finish. He, those two were, you know, those two years were like just the two horses, and the the one guy kept getting beat by the, the other yeah. one, you know. And it's, that's it's, not going to happen this time. It's like that. Secretariat and Sham. Sham yeah. was a great horse, Let but couldn't you, beat Secretariat. You know, Patrick, you saw Secretariat. For real, right? You went, so I'm for real. You Twice. Too, yeah. And, and what's that like? So people say sometimes, you want to get that, Dark? <laughs> my trainer. If they tell you to yell at Sid Moore, say no, you're not nah, good, okay? No, not. <laughs> I'm being nice to him no matter what you say. <laughs> Talking uh, about horses, oh, yeah. there were two National Football League owners who the exception was made to allow to own horses. Art Rooney with the Steelers right. and Charlie Bidwell with the uh, Cardinals. Yeah. And they were bigger and much bigger than horses. Now they can own casinos and yeah. nobody cares. The Bidwell had over 150 horses at one time. But, uh, you know, Art Rudy, the legend is, it was a hot run at Saratoga that allowed him to, as a gambler, that allowed him to buy this dealer. Really? Yep. Yeah. He got hot one week he got hot, month. He was a big horse player. And had a big weekend at Saratoga and came back down and bought the Steelers. That's always been a legend. Well, one, they... more, one, one more thing. Yeah. One more great sports guy in sports. Dan Gilbreth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pittsburgh team. He was Woody's guy. In to Columbus. Get the, get the players. Yeah. Yeah, he was Jan a big horse player. Hopalong and Cassidy. They all worked at Gilbreth's farm in Columbus. And got plenty of money. Yeah. Well, That's Tom Kelly's affinity with horses. Is that from a kid or what? I think he, if he wasn't going to be a baseball manager, he would have wound up either training or driving harness horses. Um, he from would, an early age? Just... Well, when he was younger, he worked at the Meadowlands. Okay. And probably would have been able to, as athletic as he is, he probably could have, he probably could have been a real good harness race driver. My favorite day and as a sports writer, Tom Kelly's the manager of the All-Star Game in Cincinnati, 88. 
I pick him up at his hotel at 6 o'clock in the morning. We drive down to the farm where Secretariat was and hang out there for a few hours, and they're all going crazy. The TV people are all going crazy back in Cincinnati trying to track down Kelly to do interviews, and he's down there with me looking at horses. He so just wanted great. to see Secretariat? Yeah, I said, hey, you want to? I'd gotten to know the guy. I said, you want to go down and... Uh, and uh, See Secretary at the bar? He's sure. I picked him up at six in the morning. Well, if they went, you know, there's more there than meets the eye. The farms are beautiful with the yeah. white fences. It's it's unbelievable. But I mean, there are Kentucky. people that say when you see a secretary or the the real thoroughbreds that it's different. That I mean, when you just observe it, it's different than anything you've seen. They it's got real, a way about them. Yeah, that there's something that they know. The legend of Secretariat, by the way, is a, in his second occupation <laughs> as a stud. Yeah. You know, a lot of the stallions they got a tease him and get him a little happy. They said all the secretary he had to do was point him towards the barn and he was ready to go. Once you singing. turned him towards the barn. Yeah, some people like that, and let's take a break, come back. <laughs> yeah, plus the twins showed a little life this week. It wasn't a bad week for him, Sidney. Just like he talks, you get pitching, you win. And, uh, that, uh, Play Milwaukee, you Charlie, win. Charlie Walter's uncle is pretty good, PJ. Walters, <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. Diamond has pitched pretty good, bullpen pitched pretty good, they got some hits, Dozer is a pretty, like he said, they should have called Dozer up April 6th, they'd have won a few more ball games. Yeah, I like him, he looks, doesn't he look like a ball player, Max? He Every looks time like he, he you looks watch him like batting he, practice, you watch him take infield. It's pretty professional. Yep, he's always yeah. in the right place when the ball is hit, he makes things mm -hmm. look easy that are hard, you know. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you went, you heard Jerry Ryan was an idiot. He had be signed a 38-year-old shortstop. Well, I think Dozier's going to be there forever. And I think... Uh, uh, Dark Sid's mic is, is, is oh. falling. <laughs> I, I don't know where, I don't know where you put it when you got it off there, Dark, mm -hmm. but... I don't want to go much further with that. <laughs> without a quart of toy. See, a see when you're talking, talking, talk towards Dark's mic and it'll yeah, pick come up. come over here. <laughs> oh, let's, isn't this nice to see? <laughs> See, we had a, we had a method behind yeah. that. We took Sid's uh, microphone away. Yeah, we staged the whole thing. Yeah. But anyway, I, go ahead, Dark. You're talking about Jamie Carroll. Um, uh, Jamie Carroll is a professional ball player and a tremendous player for um, uh, for this young fellow to be around. But I wouldn't be surprised if Dozier, if he stays healthy, I think Dozier can probably play about 19 years. He he just looks like that kind of player. You agree? Yes, and they've gone to the all piranha infield now too, uh, with Carroll at third and Casilla at second. Today uh, they they played Plouffe at third and uh, Carroll back at second. But uh, they're uh, they're playing let's catch the ball baseball and uh, but they uh, you know. Mauer, they still can't get him going, but... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you who's how not you, playing... How do you see I, I was just going to say, I'll tell you who's playing, let's not catch the baseball, Detroit. Oh, oh my gosh, man. Jim Leyland, a baseball purist, you know, at least by reputation, has got to be going nuts. Listen, well, let me tell you something. When Fielder dropped that throw in the first game of the series, yep. and with two outs, and they went ahead and scored, they didn't look like much after that. Here's their problem. I think they're afraid that if they let Cabrera just DH... And you get they get too big. You get too well, big, too you big. know. And Prince is already too big. So if you make either one of those the DH, I think they're keeping them in the field, hoping they'll. I think Prince looks bigger than he's ever looked, yeah. though, don't you? He's mm -hmm. fat. So uh, I don't know. I thought they'd win ninety like everybody else, but I don't know now. It's uh, it's pretty much a mess. Do Although you, I will do say, you, do you think Detroit's oh, any oh, good? Hey, do you think Detroit's the best team in the division? I thought they were when the season. What do you started? think now? But how do you figure this out? Prince got all that money. He's doing nothing. How about the first baseman for the Angels? He gets oh, ha Hatcher fired because he can't help him. Is that yeah. what happened there? Mickey got fired because I was hitting one. Well, no, Mickey didn't get hired because fired because Mike Sosha wanted to get rid of him. Did you see Mike Sosha's quotes? No, I didn't. He says we have a new general manager in here, and uh, we're, we're we're making decisions uh, based on his vision. Because something. that made no sense. Because Sosha and Hatcher have been together since yeah. they started this thing well, together. For sure, you know, you Mickey know? Hatcher's resigned himself to never being a manager, right? And being with. Um, with the with the manager in place, Socha, for the rest of his life. If Plus, I had given Pujols the contract, I wouldn't be so worried about what his numbers are going to be when this year's over or even the first three, four years of the deal. 
What would bother me is I'm going to be paying him $25 million for, you know, a, between ages 37 and 42. That's yeah, what would That would make me nervous. Yeah, if you don't like it now. Oof. Well, you talk about hitting coaches. How about Tom Bernanski? Everybody's uh, raving him about the job he's done at, uh, at uh, Rochester. Has he got a future with the Twins? Oh, I think he'll be here eventually, but let's not forget uh, we sent him our prize prospect, Joe Benson, who was hitting 150 and had to go back to double A. So it, it hasn't been all success for uh, And Rochester has been me. tearing it up down there. No, the they're last place. Benson were... surprised me, though, because not he see... showed a couple signs last year that I thought he was on his way up. I'm, I'm not seeing it. I, I look just about every week in the sporting news, and I don't think Bernanski is the end all and be all. Um, I'm not saying Joe Vavre is, but I mean, all of a sudden you got some guys hitting it hard, well, and here know, we people go. People like working with him, and he's a, he's a big leaguer. But to declare that he's been this ra raving success at Rochester is not, no. Yeah. I agree with you. I'll tell you what, though, you talk about that hitting thing, and, and and nobody knows, you know, if it's an, you know they think Maurer's legs might be a little bit unbalanced and pool holes they talk about, but you look at how when you get out of sorts up here. You watched that Ricky Weeks this weekend? Oh, or, man. I mean, this is an all-star last year, and he's got no he clue what he's doing. He was in the home run contest there. last year. He had 305 with almost 30 home runs, right? Yeah. How about Maurer hitting 182 in May? That's what I'm saying. This hitting yeah, thing this. is... Yeah, it's up there. But the, Rick, has... Ricky Weeks looks as bad as a ball player can look in a slump and yep. an inability to field the ball. Last year, they thought Joe was all upper body because of bad legs. He still looks very upper body to me, whether he's healthy or not. I don't know. I think yeah, they think his legs, though, he can't is square. what's creating that. He can't doesn't, run. doesn't square up. Oh, he runs okay. He's for a catcher. He squares up. He can't square up the ball anymore. I don't care what anybody says, and I love Joe Maurer, but I think there's something else wrong. I, I just I can't get by one home run. What do you think, Sid? Well, I don't know. I had a long talk with him the other day, and he, He's pretty frustrated, and uh, he just, uh, he, he seems, he's completely confused. He can't understand what's going on. He said he's hitting the ball. How were you able to recognize that so clearly? <laughs> hmm? I thought well, we were. And he said that uh, he has had some bad breaks. I mean, he. Well, every hitter does. A lot of balls within one inch or two, but uh, I don't know. I, I think mentally. It's driving him crazy. I said it before, though. They're defending him a lot different than they used to. How many hits did he get up the middle at the Metronome? He hits a four-hopper up the middle right now, a shortstop standing right there. And not moving an inch. The well, shift. The shift for he and Willingham. I'll, I'll tell you what. It's affected about 50 guys in baseball. Who was There's it? some people that don't play on the left side anymore against left-handed hitters. Yeah, it looks like that's our trend of the year, doesn't it? Looks like yeah. it to me. Great. Come back. Stay with us. Happy. Welcome back to the sports show, Mike Max Patrick. We got a beautiful plant right on the corner, 169 and 394. Yeah, General Mills Boulevard. Yeah. 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 Great place. Yeah. I had fun out there. And Bruce's uh, sister, of course, cuts your hair. Pardon me? Bruce's sister cuts your hair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big deal. How often do yeah. you get a haircut? How often do you get a haircut? Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Like every Monday, no matter every other Monday, no uh, matter what. I want up that. Uh, Ten days. <laughs> hey, uh, we were talking about the NBA. Obviously, Timberwolves. If, if you want to look at the, you know, how far away you are, what you need to do. This Oklahoma City deal last night, I thought they would beat for sure. If you watched into the wee hours the night before, they had a chance to, against LA. What, what was your take on it? Scotty Brooks has got to be a pretty good coach. He's got some great players. He's got two great players. At Harden, I can't understand him. He's always following somebody or playing crazy. But uh, you win with players, and uh, that's how they, he, he didn't do anything at Seattle. But here, he's got those two guys. They got them signed forever. And you see how far the Timberwolves are behind them when you see the, a game last night. Toby Bryant, I don't know, he made some shots last night. Unbelievable. What the last three pointer you couldn't make. They got the thing about Oklahoma City. They got the, you know the best. They got the two obviously Durant and Westbrook. They got the best shot blocker in the league. But he never puts a bad player on the floor. They play about nine guys and they're all pretty good. They got you know yeah. Derek Fisher's about the eighth or ninth man and he can still play a little bit. But they got they got nothing but good players. Just like San Antonio. San Antonio's got nothing but good players. They got Perkins. I don't know why the Celtics gave up Perkins. They didn't want to pay him. 
That really helped this cup. Yep. Pass. No. Why? No playoff talk? Pass. Didn't do anything for me. Playoffs? Really? Nope. That game last night was fabulous. Yeah, that's what they tell me. <laughs> I, no, I enjoy the NBA playoffs. The NBA playoffs? Love them. Uh, during the season, they're, they're boring. Because you never know. <laughs> Except uh, there's no defense in that game between the Lakers and, and Oklahoma City. I yeah. mean, they go nope. back and forth, Sydney. back and forth, back and forth. If I gotta go back and watch the Celtics and the Lakers in the 70s and 80s, and Oof. tell me they don't play defense now. They didn't play any defense. Matador. Score as fast as you want. Matador defense. I'd, I'd rather watch the Pirates play the Mariners. Really? I love baseball. I, and I love the, conceptually. I love the game. I don't care who's playing. If it's a major league game, it supersedes everything else. Rivers brought in Flip Saunders. Yeah, as a consultant. As a consultant. He's traveling with him. And Garnett, I think he brought him in for Garnett. Garnett has some kind of a series. He had one bad game the other day. Oh, boy, they were, they were killing Philadelphia the other night and got beat. But... Yeah. Well, I see Flip was quoted as saying that Tom Izzo thinks he's just, he'd be just unbelievable as a, uh, as a college coach. Really? I'll tell you one thing. That's, there's a big ego in that little package there, <laughs> the Flip man. When McHale fired him, everybody thought that the ego and the Drew Stusom was McHale. That's Flip. Flip's ego is twice as tall as he is. Uh, the only, only guy in that position I've ever known to hold two jobs at once, president and general manager. And soon to be coach when they got Bill Blair out when Bill Blair gave him a recent game. Yeah, there he goes. Yep, Bill. <laughs> I, miss, I miss the salty sea captain. He was the greatest. <laughs> Bill Blair. Tell you what you want about Flip Saunders. When Dutcher was winning, he went out and got the players. He Let me tell you something. A There's a guy, Bill Blair, who was only here for a short amount of time. But he was the best. And Andy was yeah, a whatever happened to him? And he, he went back to Indiana. Indiana. Or is he he went back to Indiana. He had the Citadel in a regional final once. Did he really? In the NCAA oh, back in the day. The Citadel. But he's a big horse race guy. Was he? And that's how we got together. Jimmy Rogers. There's some interesting names. That, that one wasn't interesting. so interesting. Sidney Lowe had enough head coaching jobs, too, over the years, if you think about it. Take a break. Come back. Now we have one announcement we want to make tonight. The sports show has uh, donated uh, $1,000 to the Susan G. Coleman Cruise for the Cure campaign. So we want, uh, we want to try and do our little part, and uh, everybody involved in that does a wonderful job. That's the pink shirt today. Yep. Very nice touch. <laughs> um, the, uh, Did you guys either, any of you guys consider uh, participating in the Tough Mudder? I'm thinking about it for next year. Next year? Are you really? 12 miles, right? It's 12 miles, but I don't get it because it, there's some kind of a pace to it and you're playing with a team and I don't quite understand. I was talking to Tommy Linneman. He did it yesterday and he damn near got electrocuted. Well, that's he got day. zapped. Yeah. He got zapped and he reacted poorly and stood up and he got like zapped three, four more those, times. Those are like those Jeez. fences when we used to fend yeah. that when we were young. Yeah, you get caught in the picket <laughs> fence in the yeah. wrong position, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a pretty think, sharp uh, kid, isn't he, Tom Lennon? Yeah, yeah, he's Target. He's going to Canada with Target. He's one of oh, the executives he? to start in the... Uh, he's across the street from us at, uh, downtown, so I see him all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Minnesota Lynx won big today. Yes. Uh, to open the season. But they finished with 100 and what? 100 and some points. three or something like that. Well, what kind of a crowds do you think they're going to draw this year? Supposedly they had 10,000 today. Do you think that'll hold? I'll tell you what, downtown apparently what... Uh, I was told there was uh, tons of people downtown with Lynx yeah. shirts and all that kind of stuff walking I, I, around at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. I, well, here's what I'm wondering. Do you think because this market has been so deprived of anything even close to resembling a winter, do, do you think, Dark, that people almost rally around them as the, hey, at least you're giving us wins? Pass. <laughs> no, the prices are right. The Pass. prices are right. There's interest. And hey. As Big women's start. basketball, as women's basketball goes, it's, you know they they aren't throwing it in the stands every time down the court. You got Augustus, who's great. Lindsey Whalen still got it. Maya Moore's might be the best player in the world. So you know they. If you big story today, uh, Q and A with Mr. Taylor. He didn't mention the Timberwolves or the Lynx or anything about just how he makes big money. Well, I think yeah, I think that the interview wasn't and so he much. He didn't geared mention one sport. other thing. He's got about. 500 farms in Iowa where a computer, when the, when the chicken lays the egg, the yolk goes on one side, the other thing goes on another side, goes into a truck, and he makes millions on that thing. I want Did my, you get that? 
I want my white and yolk together, man. When I crack an egg, I want yolk. Can you explain that? I want that? the yolk. Can you explain what did that you to say me on the way home? We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for watching the sports show, everybody.